today's video, I'm going to be trimming out the full outside part of the island carcass. This is the side that everyone's going to see when they walk in. The other side is empty right now because that's where the cabinets will go. At the end of this video, we'll have everything installed, the corbels, the moldings of the base, the trim cap on the base. We're going to install all these trim moldings on the inside here and around. Let's get started. Some of you are going to ask me how I got the spacing in here for the amount of boxes that um, I chose and what the client okayed and the spacing. So the easiest way to do this is to say I like odd numbers because they, they're very pleasing to the eyes. On this side here, I can only get two boxes. Now you have to be able to look at this and say, okay, uh, two boxes in here will look good uh, all together. Three on this side, that makes five. So we have our odd number. Um, if this was a little bit wider this way, then you can get an odd number on both sides. You can have three and three. Yes, it would total an even number, but that's besides the point because you would have an odd number here and an odd number there. So three and three. So sometimes it's all right, you know, if you if you can't get an odd number on, on a wall. So you have to just kind of go with the flow and what uh, the custom build entails. Okay, so for spacing, I chose 50 millimeters. Now, uh, 50 millimeters is roughly two inches, so that adds up to 150 and 50, that is 100. So it makes the math easy also. So the way you get this spacing here is you measure your total width from inside to inside, and then you say, okay, I'm gonna be getting, uh, let's, let's go on this side here, because you can see a little bit better. So you measure your inside, and you say, I want um, just about two boxes in here, I think I can fit. Uh, you got to be able to eyeball it. So if I was to go just one box and then it would just be like you'd have to get uh, much bigger moldings and these are all the same size. They came in, uh, um, you know, in a lot. We got the inside measurement and then you're going to say, okay, so with two boxes here, you're always going to have three, I'll call these styles. Styles run vertical like on a cabinet door and rails will run horizontal. So if you have two boxes, you're always gonna have one extra space in between or style. So with two boxes, you have one, two, and three. So now I know they're all 50 millimeters uh, in spacing. So that's 50, 100, and 150. So you take your inside measurement, say this was 800, and now you subtract 150. So you have 650, okay? So now from the 650, you want two boxes. So we're gonna divide that into two. So each box is gonna be 325 millimeters. And so what you would do is you would set up your stop block on your miter saw, which you're gonna see me do, and these would be 325 millimeters. And then for the length, you would, the easiest part is the length because you're only just gonna subtract 100 from the top uh, and bottom together, 50 and 50. So if this was 764, you would minus 100 and the length of your style or your molding running in the vertical position. If it was 764, you minus 100 and you get 664. Okay, so that's the way I got the spacing and then you're gonna see that I'll use the spacer blocks in between as I nail it in so that I know I'm guaranteed to get 50 millimeters and have a nice even reveal all the way around. All right guys, enough talk and enough math. Let's get cracking on this thing. As you can see, I have these corbels mocked up in the corners of the columns. Those are gonna be pushed to the top and flushed up with the top so that when the granite sits on it, it's actually protruding out and sitting on top of the corbel also. So you see when I run down here, I have these cleats in place. What those allow me to do is just hang them on there and attach them somewhere. So what I'll do is once I'm ready, I'll put a little bit of glue there, put it on there, flush up the top, and then I can tack it in place with some brads and then come through uh, the sides and the top with some trim head screws and really hide them. That's gonna give me the most bite that I can get out of that and the most support and that's gonna keep them on there forever. First I'll get started by applying some glue and making sure that I line up my center marks from the top and the center of the corbel. Then I know I have it in place, I can tack it in with some 18 gauge brads and then I come back pre-drill and use trim head screws to affix it permanently. And then I'll drive two trim head screws through the top also. Once the first one's installed, I'm just going to work my way around using the same exact process for the rest of the corbels. Thank you. 
Now it's time to start cutting the base molding. Now I like this process to go as precise as possible. So I like to cut an inside corner or an outside corner, say, and then measure it up and mark it up against the island. Then make a mark with the pencil and know that that's my next cut exactly where it needs to be. Now here's a quick little pro tip I can give you. Instead of sneaking up on the cut a million times, put your saw in the zero degree position, line it up to where the point of your miter cut has to be. And since the saw spins on the same axis rotation, once you lock the piece in place and you spin the saw to the 45 degree mark, it's going to stay on that plane and cut right on your mark the first time. Now I like to pre-assemble base like this anytime I possibly can, and in the shop is a great time to do it. I'm using miter spring clamps to hold the miters closed while I tack it in with some 18 gauge brads. Then I can install this as one unit and the miters will stay as tight as possible. And here I'll apply some glue on the back, and then you can see how perfectly that slides in. It fits like a glove. Miters are staying perfectly tight. I'll tack nail it in, and then I can start to assemble the other side and wrap that around. And I'm not putting the last side of the corner in right there on the outside because I want to be able to work those corners as much as I possibly can. And then I'll pre-assemble the other side. And now I'll cut and install the base cap trim molding. This is the same molding uh, profile that I used inside the doors of the cabinets. Now since this trim molding is more flexible and smaller and easier to work with and it bends a little bit when I'm able to you know, work it into place, I just use some glue and tack it in with 23 gauge pin nails. Now it's time to cut the panel molding. That's going to create the box effect inside those panels of the island. This will basically give it the same effect as Wayne's coating on a wall. Now to install the panel molding, I'll apply some glue and I'll tack them in with 18 gauge brads. But you're going to see that I'm using my gauge blocks here as a spacer as I install these. This is going to maintain the even spacing all around and give you the perfect reveal. A couple other things that you want to do as you install these is to make sure you're moving your spacer blocks along the whole unit as you're installing the moldings and making sure that you're holding your miters tight together as you nail them in. This way you know that they're going to stay in place and the miters will stay tight. The starting point for this is actually really important. What I usually do is take my gauge blocks and I make a little 90 degree L shape right in the corner of up against where I'm going to install the moldings. That creates the perfect pocket to put your first piece in so that you know that you're going to get a 90 degree attachment on the panel moldings. I'm also locking the miters together by shooting a nail through the side of one miter into the other. And when we wrap around the other side, the process is exactly the same. So it's just pretty much a little rinse and repeat action over here. Another part of the molding install are these decorative little pieces that the client picked out and I'm just attaching them with some glue and 23 gauge pin nails to hold them in place. I'm also using a half inch spacer block for the top and the bottom so that I have an even reveal on the inside. Okay everybody, so that's it for trimming out the island. 
The next video will be the installation of this in the client's home. I'm not gonna do the finish on camera because I'm wasting too much time filming these videos already. I really need to start moving on this. I have a lot of other jobs to do. So I'm gonna knock this out real quick to finish and then I am gonna film the installation for you so you will be coming with me to the client's home. If you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. Definitely hit that subscribe button. If you guys like what you see, check below the description box. It's gonna have a link to all the tools that I use. If you need any tools that uh, you see me using in here and you wanna purchase them, please do so through those Amazon links. Also, there's a small picture of a notification bell somewhere on the screen. If you click that, it will notify you every time I upload a new video. All right, guys, thanks again for joining me in the shop, and I hope you guys join me next time out in the field.